Good morning, First Baptist Church of Greensburg. Good morning. And welcome as we celebrate the Christmas season this first Sunday in Advent. And my glasses are fogging up. <laughs> anyway, just a few announcements. Um, they are listed in the uh, bulletin. Uh, one thing I'd like to share is that um, for those of you who do not have email capabilities or don't like to read emails or whatever, we do have a few copies of the Constitution draft in the back, uh, if you'd like to take a hard copy with you. And uh, let's see here. Annual business meeting is next Sunday, December 6th, after services. That will be the election of officers and the approval of the 2021 budget. The RMMO was the Retired Ministers and Missionary Offering. Uh, that was a special envelope that I believe you had in your package of envelopes. This is very important and it's a wonderful gift as we give back to those who give so much to us. And our Thanksgiving offering is listed here, will be given to the Weekend Blessing Food Distribution Program. And it looks like December 5th, I guess that's next Saturday at 1 o'clock. We would like some help decorate, decorating the church for Christmas. If you'd like to uh, stop by and share. And, uh, well, the rest is very obvious. And uh, let's see. Oh, yes, it's official. The second floor restroom has now been uh, converted to a anybody can use it restroom. There's a special lock on it that says it's being occupied or not. So that has been a change by the property board within this building. And uh, let's see, we'll, we'll take it from there. And now something a little different. Pastor Appreciation Sunday came and went a couple weeks ago. But fear not, as we will not forego this joyous occasion. Surprise! Of the countless gifts bestowed on us as Christians by God, and as a witness of our everlasting faith in Jesus, we were introduced to a true shepherd in Christ, Pastor Branham, by way of our own amazing church member, Marilyn Osborne. We were also gifted with Pastor's loving and supportive wife, Carol, you could say we got a twofer from God. <laughs> Pastor and Carol, will you please step forward, please? Uh -oh. <laughs> right here is good. So everybody can see you. Uh, 
both of you to all of us. And uh, Brad, you shared about uh, what you thought were the elements of being a pastor. You shared about your call in ministry. You shared about your many experiences in the past. And uh, I think as you continue to share, there just was a unanimous sense among all of us that we have our inner pastor sitting in the midst of us. And uh, as the uh, days have gone by and the months have gone by, uh, there has been a confirmation uh, over and over again that surely that moment and that time you spent with us. And that was a supernatural grace of God uh, in our midst. And for that we are indeed very, very grateful. With that in our minds, and Carol, uh, for you coming and sharing that day too, and uh, knowing that you came from East Grady originally. <laughs> and uh, I know where East Grady is, and I know where Grady's Bend is, and Sligo, and Chicora. And that kind of connected us, didn't it? Yeah. Because I came from that area myself. So uh, that was another uh, added uh, piece to the puzzle. And in light of all of that, and uh, what wonderful uh, blessing both of you have been uh, to us as a congregation, I would be privileged to share this time in prayer. And I would invite you as a congregation to join with us, please. O oh, loving and gracious God, we thank you for the church and the body of Christ. And we thank you for the fact that he is the head of the church. In light of all of that, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Bram and Carol and for their partnership in ministry. We thank you, O oh God, for that meeting on that day, which we know was organized and orchestrated only by you. And uh, there's been confirmation to that over and over again in our midst. As we have sat here in the sanctuary Sunday after Sunday and, and listened to Pastor Brad preach and share from his heart what the Lord has meant to him over his many years. And Lord, we thank you for Carol and for her partnership in ministry and for becoming a part of our community as well, and enjoying our friendships with each other. And Lord, now we thank you for watching over Bram during his illness, and bringing him back to us safely once again. And we pray for your daily ministry of healing in his life, that he can make a full and complete recovery. And Lord, we ask now, too, for the blessing of your Holy Spirit that will continue upon him to lead and guide us into the future as you wish according to your will and purpose. And Lord, we pray that uh, as we move through now this beautiful Advent season, when there might be a rebirth of your Spirit in all of us through his ministry. We thank you for his shepherding gifts and for the way in which they have blessed us uh, in our ministry here at First Baptist Church. <coughs> now together we offer a prayer which we know comes from you, O God. May God bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his face upon you and be gracious unto you. May the lift, Lord lift up his confidence upon you and grant you his peace. And as a congregation of people, together we say, Amen. Amen. God be with you. God bless you. Thank you very much. God bless you. I'll give you one of these. I'll give you this. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Skinner, for your words, your kind words, but we say thank you to God for everything he's given to us. Carol and I, we often say to one another, we don't deserve anything. We don't really deserve this. But uh, we thank God for this, and we thank you for this, and we thank everybody involved, because 
without your support and your prayers and your interest and your generous kindness, we wouldn't be where we are today. So thank you so much. Yes, I do feel that this is part of God's plan for this church for a little while. So we feel the ministry that God has for Carol and myself. And we enjoy serving God together with you. Amen. Thank you. I just, I just want to say that we feel that we're the ones that have been blessed. We found this church and this is our home. And uh, I also want to thank you so very much. Thank you, Satan. It's like such an uh, a overused word when you feel so grateful. But um, for your prayers for Bram, had it not been for your prayers, I don't know if we would be here today. Um, so, once again, it's humbling, and um, we're just really grateful for being here. Thank you. Thank you. What a great speaker I have in my life. You should hear her preach. <laughs> She's good at everything. Anyway, uh, after this, let's move on in our service this morning. It's not a program, it's not a presentation, it's not even a show, but it is a time of worship. And so I just invite you now to join with me in our call to worship. You may remain seated because you're going to stand, stand in a little while. So the call to worship here this morning. Come thou long expected Jesus. Born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart, may it be so stayed in every heart. Amen. Now is the time for standing in our opening hymn. among us 
as a church community, clear our minds, clean our hearts, that we might see afresh Jesus Christ, the Savior, and send us a word of comfort and hope. And use this particular service this morning as we are gathered in your name that it will benefit us and allow us to grow spiritually. Use this service to that end because we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord who taught us to pray saying Our Father scriptural lesson this morning is Isaiah 40 verses 3 to 5. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low, and uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. We light this candle to proclaim that Christ is the light of the world, to announce that by bringing light into the world, Christ has brought hope, reminding us that good will ultimately triumph over evil, and that by living in the light of Christ, we too can bring hope to all the world. Let's pray, please. O oh God, who gave us the light, thank you for giving us hope in the form of a child of Bethlehem. As we prepare to celebrate the birth of this holy child, may we be willing to be your servants, lighting the candle of hope in the darkness of despair. Amen.
I ask you to be patient. I ask you to continue to pray for us. Uh, as we know, we will have a, a business meeting next week. So when and if something comes up, we just ask for your, your, your guidance, your direction on where we need to go. So thank you, and may God bless. I thank you, Jim, for your children's story and your announcement and information. It's all extremely valuable for us as a church group, as a church family. And we'll definitely continue to pray for the pastor search team. It's an awesome responsibility, it really is. And uh, these days there are not too many pastors. Uh, unfortunately, the candidates going to seminar are getting less and less because it's not a it's not an eight to five job. It's uh, more than that. And. Uh, some young people, some of our younger generation, they want to have the family time and time for themselves and be able to enjoy life besides being in the church. But we need to pray. God has a plan. And we want to be part of that plan, don't we? Well, uh, we're going to have time of prayer. And if you look at our prayer requests and praise a page here, there's a lot of names here. I could read them for you. I could tell you things about these uh, people that I know very well. But God knows everything much better than I could even imagine. So we got to just lift up these names in prayer and know that God always answers our prayer. We got to pray also for people that are watching us now and are staying at home because you're worried about the coronavirus and you're worried about the us here because you don't want to transmit anything to us and we understand that but we want you that are watching us right now to feel you are also part of our worship service here this morning and we include you as well in our prayers and when I look at those offering plates and I know that you have given your offering to God and to this ministry of this church you part of also my prayer this morning I do uh, want you to know that Megan, some of you don't know Megan, and she's uh, one of our church congregation members, comes with her husband and uh, worships with us, and she gave birth to a wonderful girl last Sunday evening. Her name is Grace. And you probably wonder, how why do, why do you say this this morning? Well, we have, we have uh, Joe and Sis here. They have now become great grandparents because of what happened to Omega. And we congratulate you to that new experience of being a great grandparent, uh, something I suppose is very different for you. And uh, we're going to pray for everybody. You might have a prayer in your own heart, a prayer request, and we know that you have it. There's somebody you're praying for constantly. If so, could you just raise your hand and say, yes, I do have somebody that I want to be included in our prayer, and God knows about it. And uh, we, we know that God answers our prayers in a wonderful way. So let's get into the prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, and this morning we are aware of the need in the world today, the need for your hand of peace to touch nations and people all around the world. We pray for people that lifted up their hands, saying, yes, I do have a prayer request. There's somebody that I know, somebody in the family, some friend, some acquaintance that really needs a, a touch of your spirit, a touch of your presence. We pray for the people on our prayer request list, people that are sick, people that are home, people that are suffering in different ways. God, there's nothing that's impossible for you. And you can step into all these different situations and you can change it. You can, you can heal the broken heart of it. You can heal the sick people. You can lift up those that are depressed and inspire them to move on and trust in you. God, I just pray for those that gave in the offering here this morning. God, we give to you because we love you. We couldn't do, live one day without your presence in our lives. 
And so we come to you and we say thank you as we pass the offering envelope into the plates in the church here this morning. God, we just pray for the pastor search team that they will come be continually guided by your Holy Spirit. Be with us every moment, yes, every second, because we dare not move without you being in our lives. So continue to bless us here this morning in our worship. You're the creator of darkness and light. And we gather in the deepening darkness of our world today, and we look for the light of your presence in our lives. We know there is pain and tremendous hurt in the streets of our nation and in the streets of Greensburg. And in the darkness and the corners of the world, we just pray that somehow that you would reveal your presence. And yet we gather here once again and thank you for being here to announce the season of expectation, to proclaim the light that overcomes any kind of darkness and to herald the love of God on the darkest night. In the name of Jesus. Was upon him. 
It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, in light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very own soul, too. And that last verse is reference to Jesus' future suffering and death. And even those words, his going to the cross and suffering for us, is such a blessed word of hope, for our sins are forgiven, and we experience salvation. May the blessing of God be upon you. in their heart 
And life is almost hopeless for quite a number of people in the world today. They long for something, something that can make their existence more meaningful and more fulfilling. So unlike Simeon, whom we read about in the second chapter of Luke this morning, many people don't really know what will bring happiness and satisfaction. But the Holy Spirit had told Simeon that he would not die until he saw just uh, so Messiah, the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ himself. And he never, never gave up on that. Simeon was watching and he was waiting for what the prophets had proclaimed 800 years earlier. Today, scripture emphasizes in a very particular way the word hope. And according to the American dictionary, hope means to wish for something. To wish for something. You say, I hope so. When I sometimes in the revival meetings, when the call to worship went out as a young teenager, I always felt the need to go down and speak to somebody in the pew and ask them if they would like to come forward and pray, ask Jesus to come in. And I would sometimes ask them, do you know if you're saved? And they would look at me with a kind of a pale face and they say, well, I hope so. Well, you can't hope that you are saved if you're not saved. It's like being born as a child and not knowing that you become a human being. It's something that is either certain or uncertain. You don't hope that you are saved. You know when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart. Somebody has said, hope is the feeling that you have, that the feeling you have isn't permanent. So what is the Christian hope then? Well, the Christian is not to be written off as a form of wishful thinking. The letter to Hebrews describes it as an anchor, as sure as it is, as it is firm. And this anchor cannot drag because it is rooted in the very being of God. I say that again. This anchor of hope cannot drag because it is rooted in the very being of God. The Bible says about hope, now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. So the Christian hope, my friends, this morning is more than wishful thinking. The Christian hope is faith to believe that what God has promised will surely happen. You see, hope is a, a fundamental element of the Christian life, just as it's essential as faith and love is. Now, Simeon, I hope and he had faith to believe that it would take place just as God has promised. And Simeon was even content to let God, to let God do the things in his own way. Sometimes we tell God how to do things, don't we? But Simeon was content to just leave it to God and let God do it in his own way and in his own timing. Although most of the Israel people were expecting a conquering king that would be riding in on a white horse. But Simeon sensed God at work, even in a poor mother with her baby. He could believe that Jesus was not just a baby to be cradled, but that Jesus was a savior to be accepted. Most people in the Jerusalem in those days refused to see this. But Simeon did not. He saw it very clearly. He knew that God could do it in any way he wanted. So in Isaiah spoke repeatedly of the coming of Messiah. And you have those Bible verses up there on the screen. These are the different ways that Isaiah spoke about the coming Messiah in the Old Testament. And Micah foretold the coming of a ruler as well. 
and you have the Bible verse. Now you see, you have a Bible, don't you? You know it's divided into the Old Testament and into the New Testament. You know that much. In the Old Testament, we read about God's promises to you, God's promises to all of us. And when we move into the New Testament, we see the fulfillment of the promises of God in the Old Testament. That's why this book comes together. We have promises and we have fulfillment of the promises of God. Isn't that good to know? We... We need to read the Bible more. I sometimes ask my our church secretary when she comes into the office, I would say, did you have time to speak to God this morning? And she would say to me with a very kind of clear face, she said, yes, I did my meditation and I did my prayer. And that's very important. My dad used to tell us we can't have breakfast until we have had our spiritual breakfast. And that was a very good tradition in my home. Well, the Jewish people, whatever else they might have lost, they kept alive the promise of a coming King of Kings. The first pages of Luke's Gospel are filled with people who were waiting. We read about Zacharias and Elizabeth. We read about Mary and Joseph. We read about Simeon and Anna. They were all waiting for the fulfillment of God's promise in the Old Testament. Simeon, for example, was controlled not by hopelessness. But he was controlled, as we read this morning, about the Holy Spirit, who prompted him one day to go into the temple and take a look. And he saw Jesus, the newborn baby, and his words of praise uh, are very well known for us, and we, uh, they resound of, of hope and, and expectancy from God and from the people. And this is what it says. This is the example of a patient hope of God, in God. He said, my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared before the faith of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon recognized Jesus already at that point as the light of the world. And that's why Isaiah wrote these words, I will also give thee the light unto the Gentiles, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. Friends, this morning, would you agree with me that we live in a very messed up situation? We live in a very dark world, don't we? And every time you turn on the television, it's not always pleasant news that we get. The breakup and the breakdown of family staggering. The use of drugs are appalling. The prevalence of abortion is mind-boggling. The persecution of Christians all around our world is startling. And the terrorist activities is frightening. We need to anticipate Christmas once again with a Christian hope. Yes, with a Christian hope and with a Christian expectancy, with a Christian excitement, with a Christian sensitivity and insight into what Christmas is all about. Christmas is more than just a seasonal observance, something we do at this time of the year. Christmas can be a life-changing experience for many people. And just as in Simon's day, the majority of the people were not aware of the true meaning of Christmas. And so it is in our day as well. I say to all of you in church this morning and those of you that are watching me by the internet, may this Advent season cause us to anticipate the blessing that God is willing to give us, the blessing of God among us as we celebrate Christmas once again and the Savior who made it all possible. 
And so as we celebrate Christmas very soon, let us pause for a moment and, and, and look at the Lord through our eyes of faith. And you know, if we really do that, something is going to happen to all of us. What we do, we will be able to lift our voices in praise to God, knowing that He is our only true hope. He is our only true hope. Now we're going to sing in our final hymn this morning, a hymn that I, I always like to sing at this time of the year. It's Emmanuel. It's a lovely song. It's a beautiful, significant. Emmanuel means God with us. And if you have Emmanuel in your life, life starts making sense. But without Emmanuel in your life, everything is senseless and hopeless and doesn't make sense at all. But if you have Emmanuel in your life, God with us, then everything gets so much clearer. Shall we stand and sing this meaningful chorus together? And don't sing it too fast. Sing it a bit slower. Let the words really sink into your mind and into your heart. And if there's anyone here this morning that have not received Emmanuel, Jesus Christ, God's gift to each one of us, I would like you to not leave the church this morning without receiving God's gift. Jesus, Emmanuel, into your life. Now let's stand and sing together and think about what you're singing. Thanksgiving season, we express to thee our heartfelt thanks for the unspeakable gift of your Son to each of us who believe. And while we look forward to Christmas, 
as an event on the calendar. Let us never, never forget to watch and wait for the return of our Lord, who is our eternal hope. In the name of Jesus, we pray.